Quick service announcement time. Until the 29th of December, this channel is proudly sponsored by HelloFresh UK. You can get discounts on fresh recipes and meal kits delivered to your door. You can use the code down in the description at checkout or the link down there as well. And you'll get 50% off your first box and 35% off the three after. Well, we've reached that lovely crossroads in this build a nation save. The first point at which we have to start looking at the nation and coefficients and all the other stuff too. We've also got to focus on our squad for next season because we've reached the top tier one year ahead of schedule. But if we come back down, all this hard work will have been pointless. <laughs> Yes, hello and welcome along to part 35 of Lifting Spirits with me, Daniel. We're back today to review season four, deal with the crossroads that we mentioned in the intro. And of course, after winning that epic title race with Porter Down, we are preparing for life in Northern Ireland's top tier. So if you're looking forward to all of that, as we start to shift the balance from building a club to building a club and a nation, then please do put a thumbs up on it. We'll talk about coefficients, of course, and all the other nerdy stuff we used to focus on with Bangor City and FM21. But first and foremost, we've got to stay up next year. The plan was to be in the top tier within five years. Yes, we've done it in four, but if we come back down next season... We will have technically failed our objective. So it's very important that we build a squad to stay up and that we live within our means because financially things are not looking great. And that ain't going to change till we're in Europe. Let me tell you that. So we're going to start with the usual end of season review. We're back exactly where we left off after our title success on the Saturday night. So we'll be back in the morning for the official season review and then we'll start to focus on the bits behind the scenes. Back in a moment. Well, a slightly weird one to start off. It took two days to get our season review, which has never happened before. But crucially, we have got that trophy at the bottom of the screen. We have won the championship. Yes, it was very tense. Yes, we spent half the season basically level on points with Porter down. But that crucial win against them after the league split is the one that ultimately won us the division. So let's go and get through to the new arrivals because I think you'll understand where we've improved so much this year. And I quite often am self-critical of my transfer windows. And then I look at these end of season reviews and say, actually, it's not so bad, is it? We've got no official transfers out, a few players released, a few that were loaned out. But the players in is where the difference was made. Because if you look at the players that have left the club on loan and some of those who got released who weren't great, the likes of Ryan McGiven last season and a few others, this is a big step up. Leon Boyd was without doubt the man that changed this season around. Because last year, we were a good side. We were competitive. We were rock solid at the back. But Jordan Jenkins could not hit a barn door. Leon Boyd, one goal short of one a game in the league, three short overall. He has scored 40 goals in all competitions. He is a youngster. He's got a year on his contract with an extension clause as well. We are guaranteed Leon Boyd for at least two years if we want him. And the way he's playing, I have no doubt that, of course, he won't do the same, but he'll score goals in the top tier. And maybe... Just maybe he'll be that first one who gets an offer from another club. A lot of other players that deserve a mention too. A few coming from the Republic of Ireland. The returning Chris Latifa permanently. What a player. He'll be crucial in the top tier. Oren Crow grew into his role in the second half of the year. Greg O'Cox, the man who featured in every save. Not bad at all. Let's be honest. He did the job he needed to. He's a solid squad player. KLM Reed on loan, brilliant. Chris Johnston the same. He's going to leave absolutely massive shoes to fill next year, but we'll look at that on a squad planner later. Darius Ruhi was okay, probably won't get a new contract. Ada McDowell, we know he's coming back. Beck, I hope we can do the same with. And James Convey, despite that red card in one of the last games of the season, a really good addition to the squad. I'm not sure what order they're actually in. If we go in average rating, Latifa, Convey, Boyd. What a three set of players they are. Fabulous stuff. Great players added to the club. But next year, we're going to have to shift the balance a bit. And we'll talk about what I mean in a moment. Let's go and get through for a season to remember. As in this save, we do get to see the league table. Four points clear. It looks a lot better than it was. In the final day, we were one point apart. Porter down lost their final game. We nicked it 1-0. And that was the crucial difference. But otherwise, what a year. We had a couple of sticky little spells, that four without a win, starting with Porter Down in October. And it did come down to the Porter Down games, didn't it? 
Four in the first one, that 1 0 defeat in the game we dominated in December. Then we had the boring 0 0 draw just before the league split. That one kept us in the title race. And then the 3 1 win that sealed it with four games to go. In the Northern Irish Cup, we had a nice run. Beat Colrain, but got dumped out by Glentoran in the end. In the League Cup, Glenarvan, top tier opposition, yet again put us to the sword. And Carrick Rangers, perhaps a disappointing one, as we lost in the first round to another top tier side. But. If we can compete with those sides next year in the same way, over a 38-game season, I have no doubt we can fight to stay up. Let's look at the moments to remember. Biggest win was in December against Bangor, a 6-1 away win. Pretty sure we showed that on camera, didn't we? We then had a 3-2 win as the match to remember in the League Cup. We definitely showed that against Crusaders. Big help from them going down to 10 men when they were 1-0 up and dominant. And in goal of the season, who was it? It was James Convey. Early goal, a good free kick. And it was in a 3-2 win. It was crucial in the end. Let's get through the finances which do not look good. I'm hopeful that the sponsorship, the broadcast and all the other stuff will go up a bit next year. We're into the top tier. It might take a year to fully get over, get to that national reputation, get to the stage where people recognise us and get more TV games. But initially, it's going to make a big difference. Whether we can get out of debt before we get into Europe, I'm not so sure. It will either take a player sale or it will take a European playoff. One of the two. How did we line up? I know a lot of people have had problems with this screen since the update. Not me though. That is pretty much spot on. You could argue in midfield, maybe Beck gets in ahead of Crow. There's an argument perhaps to be had for Reed above McDowell as well. But other than that, that is the 11 we've used all season. I can have no complaints. Through to the accolades. What have we got? Four manager of the month awards. We better get manager of the season as well. Hawkins disciplines all thought we knew that already. Boyd has shattered every goal scoring record. Johnston has broken the assist one. And Leon Boyd, bar goal of the season for Convy, has got a clean sweep of the awards. So excellent work from him. History in the making as we return to the top tier. The first aim ticked off from joining this brilliant club. We've got them back where they belong. Now, can we build on that success, both for the club and later on for the nation? Let's go and get the dynamic manager timeline. What has happened in season four that we should be excited about? So 25-26, we shot Crusaders in the cup. Lots of good players coming in. Leon Boyd, the big one. 16th of June, that was the day that everything changed. Moving further on in the year, we win the championship. And Leon Boyd broke all of the records. We complete the epic journey in taking distillery from the bottom Northern Irish tier to the very top of the pyramid. But I'm not considering it the top until we've won that league and got into Europe. So let's go and finish off. Let's start planning our squad for the new season. And then we can drift our attention just very loosely to the start of the build a nation element of this save. So let's look at the overall 11 because there are some inductees here. Leon Boyd, of course, is the star and will be up front. Jordan Shearer is the sub striker above Jordan Jenkins. Convey, McLean and Beck are in. I hope McLean stays. The contract situation is not changed yet. Maybe it will when we go to the top tier. But overall, a really good season. Fantastic news all round. What are the club expectations? Attempt to avoid relegation. I can live with that all day long. So we've not got the pressure of staying up in terms of avoiding the sack, but we know we want to do it. And I believe we can. We'll do all the team meeting stuff in a moment. The supporter profile update, more core fans, big social media increase. Maybe that will reflect in our reputation next year. And they're happy with everything. Making the most of set pieces, possession, solid defensive football. We've done a lot. We cannot be more proud. Let's go and have a look at a squad plan that set it up for the new season. We need to find out what holes we've got to fill in this squad because most of the key players are tied down, but the low knees are going to leave big shoes to fill. So just to make things slightly different to normal, we're going to start on the experience matrix because I want to show you where players are considered to be in their development path here. And of course, we've generally got quite a young squad or a squad that's not played at the highest level. So I wasn't expecting to have loads of experienced players here. I mean, looking at it a bit more closely, actually, you could argue that you just go into experience when you're over 30 because there is an argument that Grego, Cox and Foster certainly aren't at their peak anymore. But Mitchell and McGill, the only two real first teamers in there. And McGill, let's be honest, he is the weakest player in the team. He is purely there for that personality and that drive. What we have got, though, is a lot of very good young players, including academy ones. So I'm looking at this for next season. These are the players that are due to stay, bar Kielem Reed, who I must have forgotten to take an out of somewhere. But this is a pretty decent squad. We've got a lot of emerging players. 
are they going to get picked up? If they're emerging in terms of reputation, if they're playing well, like Boyd, like Convy, like Orkin, is someone going to make an offer? That's what I want to know. So we'll keep an eye on this screen as the years go by. But I'm going to make a little bit of a gamble this year. And it's the first season where we've not really got a massive expectation on us. Because even when we came up last year, we were expected to do well. This year, we were expected to at least get the playoffs. We couldn't really take any gambles with the squad. This season is all about staying up, but there's no greater expectation. If we finish 10th out of 12th, we're very happy. So as a result of that, and as a result of the fact that players who so far I've looked at for contracts want greater terms, I really want to get the highest potential youth players tied down to permanent contracts. And that means I'm going to have to offer them the squad status of fringe player. And that means they're going to get 30, 40 quid a week. I've got to make sure that we save money somewhere and make sure that we don't go over this wage bill while still allowing us to improve in key areas. So what I've decided to do in certain backup positions is go for youth players and leave ourselves with maybe the chance to have a player who's half a star less in current ability, slightly less able than the person who's currently doing it, but with massive potential to improve. We've seen with Dylan McLean, we've seen with the likes of Latifah Crow Boyd, with regular training, we can improve players. So let's have a look at what I've done with the squad. Goalkeepers, very settled. If we can get a great one to replace Connor Mitchell, then fine. If not, We'll stick with what we've got. I'm not too disappointed. Right back is a big improvement zone. McGill is not going to be a top tier player. As much as I love him, he's never leaving this squad because his personality is incredible. But to compete next season, we've got to have a first choice right back. We've got to have one of quality. And there's not much depth there either. Foster's out of contract, he's declining. And Dala, he's not good enough and he's probably going to leave anyway. So we are short in that area of the pitch. A centre half is a little bit better. We've got Orkin and we've got McDowell, who we know is coming back. So those two are settled in. McGill can go and be a sub-centre half now, which would be great. So Orkin and McDowell, as it stands, will be a good centre half too. You can see we've got a youngster, Johnny Snoddy, who I will offer a deal to. But he's not good enough either. So we've got three centre halves. We probably need a starting right back and a rotational central defender. Maybe even a replacement loan for Keel and Reed. A left back, it all hinges on McLean. Edgar is the one player out of contract who I'd like to keep. Though McNichol behind him isn't too bad. Maybe he's one who could benefit from being loaned out though. Dylan McLean, if he stays, is the best player at the club. If he gets that interest, if he moves on. I think it was Colerain last time. It is. He's going to find it hard to turn that down. So we'll see if he stays or not. But if he does, he will be a crucial part of our plans. If not, we're going to need a starting left back as well. Into midfield, Jack Chambers has signalled his intent to leave. Beck, we've got no sign that we can get back at the minute. So that will leave us from this season with just Levinston and Crow. Now, Colin Robinson is coming back from loan, might be able to be part of the squad. And to be fair, if I have to start the two that are here, I won't be devastated. They're very good players but we do need a bit of depth. We'll try and go to Linfield before we get promoted because that affiliation will be cut when we play in the same division. So we've got until the 25th of June. Basically, the players' loans end on the 31st of May and we've got about three weeks then to see what players are in their reserves. Can we get any of them on loan? Maybe just bolster some of these areas where we need a backup centre-half, a backup centre-mid without having to spend big money, without having to go wild and have players who won't play. So that's the plan in those positions. I'm happy with those two starting. It's just what depth we can have beyond it. Number 10 is a little bit of a tricky one because we've got two brilliant youngsters who will be our backups. I'll let Darius Ruhi go. They're virtually the same ability now anyway. James Convy is a stunning starter. We've seen him this season. But the other caveat of that is he's also the only player who can play left wing because Johnston's loan is ending. I don't think our chances of getting him back are too great. He'll probably break through into that Glen Torren side. Darrow Mallon is coming back from loan is all right. We know Latifa can do a job. Grego Cox, we could offer a new deal who can play off both wings. So we're basically in the position where either we need a starting left winger or a starting attacking mid. And James Convy can do whichever one we don't get. So in fairness, we've covered nine positions now. The other two, we know we've got good players. I think we only need two players for our starting 11, a right back and a left winger or attack in mid. Of course, it's going to be about adding depth and promoting some of the youth players, but otherwise I'm really pleased with where we are. On the right wing, we've got Latifa. Matthew Buchanan is one of those I must get tied down to a contract. He is improving. He has played a bit of football. I guess the main question then is do we keep Grego Cox and loan him out, let him get a full season of maybe championship football? 
or do we keep him here? I'll be interested to get your thoughts on that. And then up front, we know who's starting. Leon Boyd is the man. Marty Bell is improving a bit. Just his personality does not caught up. And then Surgeon up, Convy, they can cover there. So it's only really if we can find a lone player as a backup. Because Leon Boyd is definitely the number one at this club. So really good side overall. I'm only planning to replace two of the starting 11. But we're probably going to need six or seven to add to the depth. Lots of the young players will either get contracts and go out on loan. Or stay here as backups in some cases. And I think that we're going to have a good season. I don't expect us to reach the top half or get to Europe or anything like that. But I do expect us to stay up. And if we can keep these players, we will be all right. I've no doubt of that. Of course, the big issue is with us winning the league, with us getting promoted, are we now going to get offers for some of our players? They're going to be more noticeable. They're emerging talents. Are they going to get picked up by others? That's what we've got to watch out for here. But with that done and with the club focus done, we've got most of our team tied down for next year. You've seen a lot of players we've worked on getting those contracts over the line. So it's a good half of the squad already and certainly the core and the spine of that starting eleven. We know McDowell's coming in as well. And if we can renew the loans of Beck, Reed, and Johnston, we probably don't have to do anything bar a right back. But let's go and start the bit of this save I really enjoy now, which is the shift towards the nation. Because as we get to the top tier, we've got to start worrying about other clubs as well. Can we give players to other clubs in the nation? Can they do well in Europe? Can we help them improve? And although we're one of those who aren't dominant yet, it's going to happen in the next few years. We do know that. So let's have a look at the European coefficients and see how Northern Irish clubs have been getting on. Because that's going to be a big part of the next five years. When we get to Europe, we need the other clubs to have already established themselves. So these are the screens that we haven't looked at. I think it was the first season, maybe the second, where Linfield did really well. And we haven't had a look since to see how that's been followed up. I know that the title's been spread around a bit. Lan have won a couple. I think Coleraine have won one as well. But where are Northern Ireland in the rankings? Because they start right down near the bottom. Oh, they're up to 38. That's not bad going. You can see they had one really poor year in 23-24, but they are doing okay and fairly consistently. So they're staying in and around that position for now. It's a big jump up to get into that top 30, which I think is where you start to get better qualification routes. Let's have a quick look at the places. It is. So when you get up to 32nd, in fact, that's when you start to get one team into Europa League qualifying rather than the Europa Conference, which just allows you to start building up. And then when you get to sort of 24, you're getting in later in the qualifiers. But that's a long way away for us. What we want to do is get this nation up to 32nd. That's something we're not going to be able to contribute to for the first few years, other than maybe selling our best players to the top sides. So let's see which clubs have been doing the most and which clubs we expect to improve in the next few years. If we get them in order of nation and go down to Northern Ireland, I would expect that Lana and Linfield are probably the best. So, Linfield, we're still listed in here. I've no idea why. We've got absolutely nothing in recent years. I guess there's so few clubs that have done it. But looking at Linfield, they are without doubt the best in the nation. So they had a really good year in that first season, and they had a pretty spectacular season the third time around. Last season obviously went out in qualifying again, but still did all right. And I think that looks like the issue. When Linfield are winning the title and getting into Europe, they're doing really well. Lan have struggled a bit more by the looks of it. Colrain have offered next to nothing, and nobody else is really getting that involved. Last season, Glenarvan got a point. Maybe they won one game. But there is no real depth to the nation here. So that's something that perhaps is going to be an issue moving forward. We do need the same sides qualifying every year for now. Getting that real 2-3 horse race at the top. So let's have a look at how Linfield got on this year. Because they've got massive points there. They got to qualify this year. But last season, they got into the Europa Conference League groups. How did they do? Right, they got through to the knockout round. So that's definitely where the success has come from. Lan, unfortunately, have not done quite as well. And that's annoying because they've won the league again there. Have they been spending money? Only a little bit. So they're perhaps not improving enough to do well in Europe. I am just interested to see, actually, where the big money has been spent, if at all. If we get in order of fees for the top tier, the most money that's been spent is Linfield and Coleraine, in fairness. Going back the season before... There's not a lot from Larn, which they are sort of the money boys of Northern Ireland as known. But Linfield seem to be getting the bigger players within the nation. Warren Point are signing players for massive money. Don't know where they're getting 175 grand from. And going back the previous years, there wasn't a huge amount. More players going out than anything. So that's definitely an area that's got to improve. 
The league itself is flying up the competition reputation. It's up to 72nd. It's level with League 2. So it's done a really good job to build itself there. And we're going to hope to contribute to that later down the line. And having a head start before we already get to the top, that's going to make a really big difference. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for Lahn next year. Did Linfield finish second at least? They did. So there's going to be some European football for those two. And then it looks like it's Glenarvan, Colrain and Glentoran that keep battling it out for the last two spots. So once those four are settled in, we'll try and join that pack in a couple of years' time. And maybe we can start to build the nation as well as the club. Of course, next year's end of season review will include the bookmark where we have a look at all of the leagues and see what's been going on in the first five years of this save. But for now, that is our end of season four review. Probably one of the most epic title races we've ever had against an AI team. To be level on points in November and then in April as well, really massive. We will reflect at the start of the season as well as on our transfers as to whether Portadown or Nuri or Ballyclare are joining us in the top tier next year. But for us, not a massive change to the starting 11. Let me know if you agree with what I've suggested on the squad planner. Let me know what you think of the Northern Irish coefficient performance so far and how long do you think it will be before we can maybe edge towards Europe in Northern Ireland's top tier. Let's just worry about staying up for now. If you did enjoy this episode and season review, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. Everything looking great off the pitch. We'll be hoping that's the case when we come back again. If you want to find out and see what we do in the summer transfer window, then do subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We've got daily videos from two long-term stories as the head coach will be back tomorrow at half three. And then we'll be here in two days time with a summer transfer special at Distillery. Top tier football is arriving in Northern Ireland. I'll see you there for that one, and I'll put the head coach above my head now. Mm -hmm.